All right, guys, so let's get started. Let's start removing every indicator that we have on screen. And once we remove it, remember, uh, you can add them at the top of your screen right here on the Add Indicators or Indicators tab. And make sure you are on Invite Only Scripts. And you'll see a ton of indicators right here on my screen. Do not worry about them. Uh, most of them, you will not have them all. Why? Because there are pieces of the same indicators that you have, but they are... Um, they are piece apart for testing purposes. So the ones that you should be looking and actually having are the ones that end up with Pro, like for example, Market Oracle Pro. So let's click on that one, right? Let's also take a look at the Market Dynamics Pro. Let's click on that one. And finally, Prime Oscillators Pro right here. So let's click on that one. So just so you understand, most or in fact, all of these indicators are bundle indicators. So you will have uh, all of those indicators um, within indicators. So everything is inside of those three. We're keeping or we're trying to cap it at, at max three indicators. So for the new members or the members that do not have uh, TradingView Pro or any other, or only are using the TradingView free version, they can still use all of the uh, power of these indicators. So that's why we, we're keeping them up to three indicators so but all of those all of the rest of the indicators are within the same indicators all right so let's get started with the very first one which is the flagship one uh indicator market oracle pro so let me turn off everything else and let's head over right here the gear icon and let's start uh configuring so guys remember this is a base configuration to walk you guys through um and after this, uh, remember, you need to fine tune your, your settings based on your liking, right? Again, we're not going to be focusing on either uh, scalping or swinging. Nevertheless, you need to remember that this process is exactly the same, whatever time frame you're following based on the same parameters. So you need to learn how to fish. I will not giving you straight out the fish, correct? So the process is the important part to follow, right? All right, so let's get started with signal mode. If I click on signal mode, you'll see trend mode, reversal, and trend mode, and reversal, right? So trend mode is uh, basically showing you the trend. Where is this, the market heading? Is it bullish? Is it bearish? Nevertheless, right now, uh, compared to the previous um, updates, right now we have labeled the trends as sell and strong or buy indicators, right? Remember, this is not for you to blindly follow. Remember, this needs to work in confluence. So the sell and buy flags are meant to be used at the end of your confluence point. So if you have all of the rest of your confluence and then you have a sell signal, then you can be uh, you can rest assured that you can take that sell signal. But if you're using any of these indicators as standalone indicators, you are not doing it correctly because remember that conflicts it's the king at the time of analyzing the market. All right. So once we get that out of the way, let's try to configure our trend node, right? So remember, trends, they're usually big movement. Again, it doesn't matter if you're in the four hour or even in the one second, you're looking for trends when you're using the trend mode. And a trend usually it's a big movement. So for example, let's try to see a big movement like this and we can clearly see that we are up trending in here, right? Or we can go farther back down into the charts and look for something much, much better bigger right so like for example this whole trend and we can see that we were down trending all this way right but we have a ton of buy and sell signals that means that we could be or we could be improving the way we use it so that brings me to the dashboard right this dashboard right here to your right side let's start with the optimal tuning so optimal tuning right now we have a very important update on the trend mode which is that trend mode starts uh, testing or back testing itself and it's giving it's giving you what it thinks that it is the best uh, configuration for your trend mode. Uh, remember that everybody sees the charts differently, right? So maybe I can have a configuration and then pitch it to you. And then you might be saying, oh, you know, OC, this configuration doesn't work for me. That is because your brain is hard rooted 
a slightly different than mine and we can see different things in the same chart right i'm not gonna go so deep into this but let's get started with that tuning and then let's figure out that we are going to be using 28 right here so 28 right and then just click away wait for this little eye to stop swirling around and something also very important is that auto maximizers needs to be off right again Auto maximizer needs to be off in order for your tuning uh, be able to um, take place, right? Then let's just skip a little bit forward into the charts or into the, the settings in here and let's add into additional features the dynamic reactor. Dynamic reactor is a high volume zone. It is not an EMA, it is not a VWAP, it is nothing like that, but it is a high volume zone, right? So it looks like a v uh like an ema and also looks like a vwap and it could be used as such it is not it is a high volume zone and what we expect of a high volume zone are two things either rejection or grabbing the volume out of that zone that's why you'll see that whenever the price breaks through we have big body candles compared to previous candle size look at that breaking through huge body candles compared to previous candle size right and again and again and again when we break through right but most of the cases as for a big so uh, volume zone we expect a react a rejection out of it right and now you can start seeing what is it important all right so once we break through a high volume zone like this is the case like in here we usually are expecting not to be able to break it for a while why because this is a high volume zone correct and a high volume is very difficult to be broken so to configure our trend mode i usually suggest starting with your uh, optimal tuning and then move up or down based on the dynamic reactor correct so again it doesn't matter if you're in four hours it doesn't matter if you're in the one second the process is the same you need to compare it your breakthrough right you need to have or you're looking to have a downtrend signal as we break through and then try to eliminate the signals which i call interference right so you're going to see that we have a little bit of interference uh, at this point this could not be considered interference because we broke above and we had a bull signal and we broke below and we have a sell signal right we can still do a little bit more to try to um get rid of those signals right so now that we have our base um sensitivity here or our best tuning we can move it up or down uh to try to eliminate this kind of interference right so far it's looking pretty good nevertheless i'm going to be changing it to 35 so far just so you can see the difference in here so let's wait for that little eye to stop scrolling around and see what is the difference on the chart all right let's just give it one sec and here we go as you can see this fly has moved over right and is way much more closer to this one and as you can see this section has been uh, be, be, have, has become a smaller right so that means we can start also improving a tiny bit more that sensitivity now you can see like for example this one as we break above we have a bull signal and as we break below we have a bear signal right break above bull signal break below bull signal all right so so far i think we're looking great we can still uh add a little bit more of that uh fine tuning or a little bit more of that tuning nevertheless i'm very comfortable with the settings that we have right now right why because there's gonna be two ways to tell if i'm bullish or am i bearish the first way to tell if i'm bullish or bearish is to take a look at the dynamic reactor right and then look at the signal that we have so if i'm below dynamic reactor i'm usually bearish and every single retest or pullback is going to be good for a retest or a re-enter for that. That's why I'm going to be ignoring or that's what is going to be allowing me to ignore the signal because I have a strong other signal that is indicating me that I'm still downtrending. Correct? All right. So any questions so far with the dynamic reactor and how to find your optimal tuning setting in, the, um, um, in trend mode? Optional tuning value for four hour chart is same for all 
No, it is not rash. Uh, your optimal tuning will change based on your asset. So not because you read 28 right here, it's gonna be always 28, it depends on the asset. And especially once you um, change from, for example, BDC, which is crypto, and SPY, which is traditional market, and also QQQ, which is traditional markets, they have different volumes. And based on different volumes, you're talking about different volatilities. So you might have to do some minor adjustments. But if you're talking, for, for example, something like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and some other important coins within the same uh, market space, yes, the settings might be the same, and especially once you have found your own best setting. Remember, this is what technically, this one technically is telling you the best technically, um, a best setting. But what I perceive with my own eyes, with my brain, it's gonna be may be different of what mathematical says, right? And the important part here is that you can configure or fine tune the market article to work with your brain. So that will give you a best uh, results, right? So second, is the optimal tuning at the dashboard dynamic value or static value? That's a dynamic value. So again, it will be changing throughout market conditions and it will be regenerating also based on the assets volatility and price actions. So just to change the tuning uh, to your liking of the flex, uh, why not auto maximizer? I mean, why not? Be I explained this already, L Brown, because of your way of seeing the charts. If you want to keep with the optim optimal tuning, that's fine. By the way, auto maximizer, we have not done uh, gone there yet but if i click auto maximizer it will ignore my own tuning and will grab the uh this optimal tuning and place it on instead of the tuning and it doesn't matter if i change from asset to asset i'll still have respect whatever uh whatever it's in the optimal tuning for auto optimizer at my way to see this uh charts i'd rather start with the optimal tuning which I can very easily see in here, turn off auto maximizer and then adjust or fine tune in based off what I like to see in the charts. So does, does that answer your question, your question, Elo Brown? Or rigid classic, does the tuning also affect reversal mode? No. Reversal mode states the, the same it is. So as previously, reversal mode, it just set it and forget it. It is not tunable. Uh, more interference with auto maximizers. Yes. Uh, nevertheless, I, I mean, again, the uh, finding that you have more interference, that is depending because of the way you see the charts. And you, as me, uh, we might be able to find a something more suitable to our way of trading that's why i do recommend always start with optimal tuning and then fine tune your tuning like for example i know 0.40 or something like that and then start rising by five increments so all right let's see so automax is the best result for back testing yes mathematically speaking but not the might not be your best uh setting for yourself but it doesn't take it current market conditions. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Do I have that right? No. Uh, let me repeat that because you. I think you did not get that right. But let me kind of like make it uh, rephrase it one more time. So auto maximizer is exact same value as optimal tuning, and optimal tuning it is a dynamic value, and it this value comes from the self back testing take into consideration the um the assets volatility volume and price action so yes it is dynamic and yes it does takes into conditions uh, the volume volatility and price action to back test itself all right uh any more questions about the dynamic reactor and fine tuning Anytime, brother. Anytime. Oh, see, I want to pipe in. Absolutely. Um, uh, 
Reggie Classis was asking, what's the recommended starting settings? It's still 60-60. Those score entries are no longer used. Yeah, you, you just got it. He just saw my reply. Yeah. Uh, the new one only uses um, a single setting, and it's been – uh, like maximize. So, just so you guys are tracking, uh, one of our new developers, he's 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 a math genius, absolute math genius. So, we did a lot of recalculations that don't need to take place in the settings anymore because it's automatically optimized in the tuning. So, there's no more si uh, sensitivity and agility. It's just a tuning entry now. So. Exactly. So, basically, by I mean. Uh, he figured out that by just changing one tuning, we can in out of back test itself, we can have the X result out of the uh, the agility uh, kind of like I plotted automatically. So yep, um, that is basically no longer needed. All right, so uh, more questions at the moment. No more questions. All right, been playing. Over the weekend, nice, nice, very impressive so far. Thank you. That's very awesome. We also are very happy with it. The new article looks so good. Yes, it does. All right. So just so you uh, know my best settings, my best settings is something between uh, 25 for uh, low volatility assets and 45 to uh, Bitcoin or something like that. You can see right now 43 is it is the previews configuration that correspond to 70 40 so if you're if you like the 70 40 from before 43 right now is uh tuning for that just so you keep that on mind all right so again for your tuning to be taking place you need to turn off off your auto maximizer all right so now let's go over candle highlighting this is the candle color mode or a rethinking of the candle color mode. Right now you can see Japanese default and Japanese default is just basically the same Japanese candles that you see. So a green and red pair candle as, they, as their close position based on the previous candle. So as you can see, no color gradient, no color changes, just a classic Japanese candles, correct? Right here, I want to pitch in on the uh, Heiki Nashi candles. Do, I mean, if you want to use them, you can use them. But if you want the, um, the official uh, poster about the Heiki Nashi, stay away from Heiki Nashi because Heiki Nashi add a smoothing value to the price action. Therefore, it is I, not giving you the correct price at the moment. Yep. I got, I got something to uh, input on that. If you guys actually look in TradingView, uh, when, when you're looking at uh, paid indicators under TradingView's homepage, it'll actually tell you that if, it is, uh, if it's using Heikinashi candles, that they can't even publish it as a, uh, as a success rate for trading. Like, so, like, for example, if Chart Prime posted pictures of our success rate of our indicators, telling you to buy, sell, so on and so forth, on Heikinashi candles, we would not be able to show that as a picture that we use to sell our indicators because it creates false data. A candle close and a candle opening is not present in a Heikinashi candle. It is only an average of the candle, which creates false reads. And it makes people... So if you ever see anybody showing a chart of how accurate something is and they use Heikinashi candles, they're showing you smoke and mirrors, guys. Heikinashi does not give accurate data for any indicator to truly read any type of consistency. Absolutely. So stay away from the Heikinashi because as Harmony just mentioned, it is an average value or it's a smooth out value. Therefore, you're not having the accuracy that you might be looking when using a pro suite like, uh, like Chart Prime, right? So stay away from Heikinashi. I mean, if you really want to use it, go ahead and use it. But again, you'll be by yourself on that area, right? All right, then. Now, getting back into the color candle or the candle highlights. Now we have a gradient, um, a gradient color scheme. So let's just give it a sec for this little eye to uh, stop scrolling. And then we're going to see how uh, the candles are colorized like the importance of this gradient it is not only looks very sexy but also it has an importance on how it all dis displays like look at this very bright right right and as the trend starts shifting look at that we start graying out and then turning purple right 
And as you can see, you see the result of that grayed out, right? Again, as we have a shift of trend, as long as we are in that trend, we are very bright color. When we start losing the trend, you can start looking at a grayed out zone. So there is two ways to be using this tool. So this is kind of like a warning. So when we start going against the trend, and we we'll start having a gradient of the color. So that means that we might be heading into a resistance. So if you are seeing that we're losing some strength, but we have a big resistance at this point at the top, that could be used based on confluence as your re-enter for your short if your downtrend below dynamic reactor and that purplish or fade out color is taking place into a resistance. The same goes for a, a support. All right, let me show you that example right here. So we have an uptrend right here, very bright color, and then we start having that grayed out color. We are above dynamic reactor, correct? And we're going down into support, and we see that grayed out color. That is meaning that we are losing some strength on the trend, but since we have a big support in this case, that could be a very nice opportunity based on confluence again to enter for a long, correct? And also, when you start seeing that we start breaking through the dynamic reactor and we are grayed out, right? That means, look at that. This one is breaking through, breaking through, then a buy signal. Well then, remember, your flag is not your entry. You'll pull back is and off we go, right? At this case, remember that we have three stages of the dynamic reactor, and this is a very nice opportunity to go over them. We have downtrending, talking about the dynamic reactor, right? So downtrending, uptrending, and what I like to call weaving. So weaving, I only describe it like that because it breaks above, below, back above, back below, back above, back below. So we're basically weaving through that dynamic reactor, correct? But it is a very strong signal or of sideways market. And when we are in a sideways market, it is a very nice opportunity to start using our predictive ranges or some other tools like that to identify where the price is channeling in and to take advantage of those higher points and lower points to again short the tops and long the bottoms correct all right so that's why it's important to know what weaving means or what do i call weaving which is only sideways market correct so uh, now that we have that uh, any more questions about what we just spoke about let's see now i know that uh, it will be a red flag for me to my trend flag where difference all weekend all right strong buy buy and sell etc i'm sure you'll go over that i mean now i know that it will be a red flag for me too so could you explain that a little bit more rigid classes we can go over that right now if you want me to all right reading you buddy in the meantime uh you uh write me on detail what do you want me to go to explain this comment was for Piper. Oh, got it. All right. So in the meantime, uh, let's move on. Uh, but as soon as you push your comment, I'll be reading it and stepping backwards if needed. So guys, remember, there are no simple questions. There are no stupid questions. There are always there are only questions. And if you have any, usually what people think when it is a simple or stupid question, that is a very important question. So do not be afraid. I'm here to help you out and answer all all of your questions predictive ranges cg when we get there we're gonna get there but be patient we're gonna get there and when we are there we're gonna be answering your questions uh lito what's the prime score all right we're gonna get there in a in a second anything else about the how to set your settings on trend mode remember guys i'm not gonna be answering questions that are not that we're not gonna nor we are not seeing at this moment just to keep in order so we don't bounce up and down and create confusion so just for the sake of having a more organized data approach uh we're gonna only answering questions about this and at the end of the question we i mean at the end of the session we can do a free-for-all q a so any more questions about how to set your tuning all right, no more questions. Let's do a quick recap. 
first things first let's uh, go over signal mode all right second one we was different words in the signal for trend reversal oh good all right so trend reversals uh oh you're talking about like for example buy sell and then strong and stuff like that uh, let me see if i can find it all right so basically uh buy it's a uptrend sell is downtrend strong when you see the the word strong that is just uh, it refers to strong buy or strong uptrend and when you see it in red it's just basically a strong downtrend or strong sell so that is basically it Trend settings change that? Yes. Trend settings change the position of the flags. Uh, the tuning does change the position of the flags because you're increasing the size of the trend that you're looking at. All right. So moving on. So candle highlights, we already have seen that the range is uh, being faded or when the trend is being faded, we're going to change of, uh, of a color code right there all right then let's take a look at what is the next one which we already know uh let's take a look at the trend statics yep what's oh, see? um <clears throat> some of these people since we have such a big class they may not know that in their indicators when they go to click on the indicators to add them that there's a document there that has a lot of the questions that they're asking can you show that real fast to them absolutely when you click right here on the top at uh, the indicators and you go to your invite only you can for example search for the market dynamics pro and just move to your right and you see this little documentation thing so just click on top of it right and you'll see that we have a very a fairly uh dedicated uh, or detailed description of what it is and what it does so many of your questions might be there already answered just by going over so do not skip on this uh, documentation because it's a very first step to jump into this indicators thank you very much army piper all right guys so now uh, heading back into into the um, candle highlights right now we have trend statics so basically when we have a bullish trend we're going to be solid green and when we are bullish uh downtrend we're gonna have a solid red so uh that will be basically it i like to have them this way why it's just kind of like uh uh seems a little bit more eye popping to me again this is personal preferences all right now we can jump into the prime score and consolidation and optimal tuning that uh i don't remember who was asking for this but it's time to take a look at it why because we are right now at the dashboard all right so right here you see dashboard the dashboard size it goes from auto it would change the size based on the candle uh, size so it doesn't interfere with your um with your uh basically with your candles and price action uh, you can have it in auto tiny small normal large and huge basically it's self-explanatory and then you can take a look at a dash po dashboard position so it cannot be dragged and dropped as we would love it to be just because the way that um trading view is coded so there's no way for us to just make it drag and drop but uh we understand that it's sometimes it's just in the way that's why we have provided you with any possible zone that you might like it for example bottom left middle and right middle left center and right and top left middle and right right so basically you can place it at any main point in your screen all right well then now that we're talking about the dashboard let's take a look at the dashboard options and what we have all right so we already have seen right now that we have the option optimal tuning so this optimal tuning we already talked about but it is mathematically speaking the best back testing scenario for the current market condition what i advise i advise to copy this one and place it on your tuning and make sure your auto optimizer is up is off and then you start moving up and down your tuning starting from the 28 or whatever number it's giving in here right until you find something that actually makes sense then let's talk about the prime score so the prime score is goes from uh one 
to 10. So basically this prime score is telling you how bullish or how bearish everything is going based on the confluence on all our indicators. So previously, long time ago, we were developing a confluence dashboard like where we added some value to, for example, the trends, the reversal signals, the uh, oscillator, the, the peak seeker, uh, and any of uh, and all of the uh, tools that we had. Right now, we already have product life, and based on that confluence, we can have a confluence score. So this is added value to basically automate the way that you see the chart. So basically, let's take a look at uh, and do a manual calculation and then compare it to the prime score. All right, so for the veterans specifically, can you guys help me out and tell me whether if I'm bullish or bearish based on the dynamic reactor? So where am I based on that dynamic reactor? Am I bullish or bearish based on that dynamic reactor? Boris, what's up, buddy? Reading you. Very, no, we're bullish. Yes, Catmo, bullish, great, bullish. Uh, you sleep right there, my brother. We are bullish. Why? Because we're above dynamic reactor. That means we're bullish. Yes, uh, Ref, BP, Elum, uh, Brown, um, Pratanska, Kumar. Hey, what's up, buddy? Nice to have you here. Hey, KR, KAR, what's up, buddy? Bullish. Yes, you nailed it. Yes, we are bullish. Why? Be big celebrity John. Hey, welcome, buddy. Yes, we are bullish. Side in Sultan. Welcome, buddy. Nice to have you around. FX Genius. What's up? And yes, guys, we are bullish because we are above the dynamic reactor. So that is one confluence point for bullishness, right? Then let's take a look at what color we are. We are red, correct? And that red usually indicates that we are bearish or we are still bearish, correct? But remember, it's not about the breakout, it's about the retest. So until we do not break below or back below the dynamic reactor, we are not completely bearish, right? So we have for bullish, let's do BU, and then bearish, let's do BE, right? So we have one and one, correct? Now, for example, let's take a look at our oscillator. Are we above or below the zero line? So that means we are bullish or bearish on the zero line, on the oscillator. Bearish, Ellen Brown, that means we're bullish. We're bullish, above bullish, yes. Boris, you nailed it this time, yes. Rigid Classic, bullish, yes. Yeah, actually, Rigid Classic gave a little bit more information. Bullish, but uh, maxed, exactly, yes. You are correct right there. So, as long as we're above the zero line, it means we have enough momentum to keep breaking things to the upside. So, what are we expecting? As Rigid Classic mentioned, we are maxed out and we might be seeing a bit of a rejection, right? So, as long as we are above the zero line, we are still bullish, right? So, you can see there is another bullish signal right here for our... Um, bullish trend right and we can keep going on and on and on and then we're gonna be uh finding out that we have much more points into the bullishness right at this specific point than the bearishness right and that is reflected right here look at that we have a seven prime score that means from one to ten we are seven bullishness so five is neutral so five is zero one is very bearish and 10 is very bullish. So any questions about the prime score? Oh, good, great. All right, Raj, Raj what's up, buddy? Pixel John, what's up? K-A-R, what's up? Oh, good. Does the prime score change on your time frame? Yes, it does. Because remember that depending on the time frame, you're going to have different uh, bullishness or bearishness. Remember, like, let's make an example. How many, if I take a look at the daily and the one hour, and I'm on purposely going that far back from one to another, right? So on daily, I might be uh, going bearish, right? But in one hour, one hour, I might be looking bullish. So in one daily candle, how many hours do I have, right? So I have 24 hours or 24 candles within a day, 
correct? That means that in one day, if I take a look at the hourly chart, I could be bullish, then bearish, and then once more, even bullish in the same day, and, and that will be a single candle on daily. Does that make sense? That's why a different time frame has a different trend, and the prime score is talking about your local time frame and your local trend. So trend mode, let's see. Trend mode settings affect the score too? No, they don't. Uh, use LTF for scalping, small move. Use for swing. So uh, pixel region, you are in the five minutes. Uh, let me go back. I'm on the five minutes and reacted is red. All right, well then that is red hot the five minutes. So remember, it doesn't matter the time frame. The important part, pixelated on, is that you follow the same process. So you can still do the same process that we always do. So remember to find out the trend. First of all, we take a look at where we are above dynamic or below dynamic, right? Then second of all, are we green or red, right? And then third, are we above or below zero line? That is the process to find out where, where, whether we are bearish or bullish. But you can basically skip that one by looking at your prime score. So prime score will be a much, much more faster way to tell whether you're bullish or bearish on that time frame. So it doesn't matter the time frame. What matters is that um, whether you're bullish or bearish. So Pixlated John, did that, does that answer your question? I'm sorry. Yeah, Pixlated John. Rush is we can consider the prime score to say in the trend for example zero to five bearish zero i would say zero to four bearish and six to ten bullish i would say it. why because five is just right at the middle so if you're five you i mean if you're five most likely you are uh, ranging or doing a small range isn't it the option of that car crypto i don't get that one l brown maybe you can re-explain a bit more so it's just a uh, time frame base no it is not time yeah it is time frame base but it is not just time frame base it is time frame base because on that time frame you are reading the indicators are having the the confluence on those indicators pointing at bullishness or bearishness so yes it could be say like that but in a rough way although the technical answer it is not it is not just time frame based uh Siggy, damn my dc crashed uh can someone explain the prime score yes uh c is goat i just explained the time score uh the wrap up for that it is uh, how bullish or how bearish you are on on the trend on your time frame so basically a uh, higher the number the more bullish the lower the number the more bearish you are does that answer your question Seeds for God. Uh, hide fire. So a prime score below five means bearish. Yes, slightly bearish if you are um, four. A little bit more bearish if you are uh, three. Uh, big bearish time if you're two. And completely bearish if you're one. So the farther you go from uh, four to one, uh, the lower the number, the more bearish you are. And then the higher the number from six to ten, the higher the number, the more bullish you are. So does that answer your question? Hide fire, fire. Lower time frame, higher time frame. Yeah, but I mean, you were talking about, uh, I don't remember. But yeah, I, I, I do understand the, the higher time frame, lower time frame thing. Uh, yeah, from what I'm understanding, five and above is bullish. Five is neutral, so I personally won't be considering bullish because, I mean, you could also say the same thing as five, five and below being bearish, right? I mean, five is just the exact same, exact middle point, so I will consider that as neutral. Uh, all right. Again, thanks. Anytime, buddy. Yes, it does. Thank you. Anytime, Pixar, uh, John. Rigid Classics, five means hands off. <laughs> yeah, sort of like that. Uh, means we're neutral. No need, Chief. I got it. Oh, yeah. Anytime, brother. 
uh, Pixar Ray John, on your time, on my time frame of five minutes, the prime score is three on BDC. All right, that means you are uh, a little bit more bearish. Uh, oh, got you. I mean, more as it sets itself from indicators on the chart. Yeah, not adjustable. Yeah, exactly, not adjustable in the settings. Correct. Um, let's see. Can't believe you are uh, charging. <laughs> what? Uh, well then, maybe you can take a look at some other options, buddy. Um, you can take a look at whatever it fits your pocket and your likings. All right. Oh, got it. <laughs> Uh, one to four bearish, not trade exactly five being neutral, not trade or not then trade. But I mean, take a look at the four, the ranging. Remember, rangings are very, very important. Uh, you guys understand, or you already have seen, especially for events, how we trade ranges and why I love ranging so much because that's what I make most out of my money. But that is my, my I mean, my personal strategy. Yours might vary. Don't worry, we're gonna go over the rest of the week on the strategies, especially on Friday. Uh, six to ten bullish, yes. One to four bearish. You got rigid classics. That's amazing. Little fish. What's hey, up? How much? Hey, yep. What's up? Uh, I, I want to let know. I see him in the chat talking about <laughs> we're going to raise the price. That's actually true, you guys. All, all the fifty-two people in here right now, we yes. are getting ready to raise the price. But the fact that you guys are in this class right now tells me that you already have subscriptions to Chart Prime. You guys are locked into your price. So price is going up because we did bring in new developers and it is insane uh, what they're able to do. But, you know, the best coders in the business cost uh, more money. So, yes, we are raising the prices, but you guys are all locked into your current price levels. So. Let's do a super reaction to that. I mean, fire, brother, fire. Guys, so stay around. So do you miss your locked in? And that will be uh, great for all of us so remember this cannot be done without your support guys and we do appreciate you that's why we try to bring you the best of the best on the crypto and markets um world so basically we're trying our best to be for you the greatest option on uh, the best option yeah so hey, let's i just uh i just uh locked in crypto keeper from youtube uh debate crypto uh, as a new affiliate sponsor, and he will also be in our Discord uh, starting next week. So, yeah, Keeper just joined up with Chart Prime too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So let's move forward to the next tool because we have a ton of things to take a look at, so we need to move a little fa faster. So the next one is the uh, consolidation score. It goes from 0 to 10 again. And consolidation score is basically telling you how uh how much are we consolidating on the the current time frame so remember the cloud that we're going to be seeing a little bit farther ahead the cloud uh for the variance uh the tighter the cloud that we have on the squeeze momentum uh that indicates that we're building up pressure and that pressure needs to go somewhere either to the upside or to the downside and it's basically is that's what it's telling you this one so zero for no consolidation, a little bit of, a, of volatility of movement based on previous price action. So you can see right here that previously uh, we did had a value in here and that value was somewhere around five or something. I don't quite remember. But as soon as we broke out of that consolidation zone, you can see that our um, consolidation score has gone to zero. Why? Because we see a change of consolidation and basically the higher this that this score goes, the more we're getting close to be broken or to be ending to that consolidation phase. So that could be used as two ways. So as we start increasing consolidation score, you know that we're getting into a consolidation. Remember, consolidation is a range and we love ranging. Why? Because we can do a ton of money in our ranges, right? And as the consolidation decreases, that means we're getting close to be broken uh, on that um, sideways market and uh, that we're going to have that volatility also volatility very very nice so we can do some money as long as the market is moving up and down so let's take a look at uh what's next so any questions about optimal tuning prime score and consolidation score <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, I love rain jeans. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, man. Oh, that's for Arbiver. What's up? Make it there, please. <laughs> Sorry, what's the optimal tuning? Optimal tuning is the uh, based on back testing. The advised sensitivity on your tuning on your trend mode. So that is your optimal tuning. Never 11. So does that answer your question? Yes, uh, Prasanta Kumar zero means no consolidation. And you can see it actually works perfectly because remember, it's not about the breakout, it's about the retest. And that consolidation that we had is just being broken. So zero consolidation for us. We're, we're back at that retest. Zero to 10, basically how, uh, how much are we consolidating? Uh, six to 10, uh, that is for prime score. So six to 10, it's bullish on prime score. Five is neutral for prime score. And four to one or four to zero, that is bearish for prime score. A consolidation zero to 10, how much are we consolidating? When we're getting close to 10 in here, that's when we're getting close to be breaking that consolidation state. All right, thanks. Never mind. I missed the time to join one hour ago. That's all right, buddy. Don't worry. Uh, we are recording this session and you can request anything at the end of the class. Uh, we're gonna be gonna have, we are going to be having a, a Q&A section. All right, so any other question about the dashboard, guys? All right, in the meantime, uh, if you have a question on the dashboard, please feel free to write it. Uh, if we are getting a higher consolidation score, yeah, it means to look at the pro, uh, the take profit and watch for breakouts. Yes, absolutely. So now let's move into the additional features. We already have used the dynamic reactor. Again, dynamic reactor is a high volume zone, a dynamic zone, right? Uh, where there is a big volume to be uh, grabbed or bounced from. Usually when breaking through a big volume, we do not expect to break it that oftenly, right? That's why it's a very important indicator. And despite it is not a support and resistance, can very much be used as a support and resistance. Remember this analogy, guys. Like you can have a gym weight on your on your doorstep and it could be used to hold your door uh, wide open, correct? And it just work great. It will just work fantastic. But it is not meant to be used like that. Nevertheless, it just works for that. So just as the high volume zone, it is not a support resistance. It could be used as such. All right. So a candle structure. So a candle structure, it is uh, basically candle patterns or candle, yeah, candle patterns. Uh, the only thing that we have changed in here is that they are much more sensitive of uh, reversal signals. So let me just uh, activate them. And also the emojis are gone. Now you'll see like, for example, in here, uh, engulfing, bullish engulfing, right? Then you'll see like in the other one, uh, bearish engulfing, that's the EG, right? And when you see the X2, that means we have two of them. And then for example, this one, um, you know, like uh, the star, evening star and morning star. So that is ES or MS and so on and so forth. Like for example, this H goes for hammer. So bullish hammer when green and bearish hammer when red. So basically, right now we have removed the emojis just to make things uh, a little bit more easy to understand by the by the text that we have in here, and that is basically not much about the candle structure. Nevertheless, we have a little bit of that uh, resume. Oh, sorry, a little bit of that um, a description in the candle structure uh, exclamation mark in here. So, any questions about the candle structures? Let's take a look at it. Nope. All good. Great. All right, then. Um, let's now take a look at the momentum waves uh, bands. Um, this is the evolution 
from the previous reversal bands. Now we're taking some momentum within the bands and make them way much more reactive. So basically in the past we have a couple of bands. So basically we have like six, six bands per side. So that made it a little bit kind of like a hard to predict where it's going to be bouncing. But by adding the momentum within the calculation of the bands, we can actually predict with much more accuracy where it's going to be the, uh, the beginning of the reaction and the high reaction zone. So let's turn it on and let's take a look at what happened in here. All right, so we have three base uh, zones in this um, momentum waves, right? The first zone, it is the shaded, the uh, dark shaded green, right? Or the dark shaded red. That is, meaning, that is meaning that we have a high possibility to reverse. And as you can see, we usually reverse right at it or very close to it. But when we have that momentum, that's why we call the momentum, we start getting within the bright red or the bright green. That's why we incorporate the momentum calculation or the momentum mathematics inside this reaction system, right? And it will be a much higher or much more uh, drastic or dramatic change in our reaction set, as you can see. We also have this uh, little uh, stripes that they can they kind of like a come, come from the top and they spill down so that means that despite we are right at the top in here we're having that momentum actually placing or taking place in here and as you can see if I mark this one to the oscillator we have seen that we have had look at that a decreasing of that volume and usually it leads to again a big change in the price action and finally we have a trend base system also integrated in here as you can see as the trend starts shifting to the upside look at that also the shaded of this line starts shifting into the green so it starts very very opaque and then gets very bright as we are within a bullish trend until again we're dropping back down and fading out into a bearish trend. So basically, this is a good opportunity to start uh, taking some last minute profits or, la or at the end profits or moving your stop to entry or even into profits before getting ready for a shift of trend. So basically, we have also integrated a trend mode within the band. So that is usually a very, very nice way to start uh, acting within the bands. So any questions about the momentum wave bands? Yes, much more visible than reversal bands and also they're much brighter and we don't have like a million levels to kind of like a pick from, right? We only have two. So basically that is it. Um, there's only, there's one more thing that it doesn't always happen, but when it does, we reach out of the cloud and we get into a purple one because this is a way much like much more um, reactive zone that it was expected based on the volatility. So basically we have a pump of volatility right there and usually it works like a support for a little while right there. All right, so, uh, so thinner, dark and less strength. No, thinner is only the zone. So the zone where the high reaction is just smaller, right? So this is based on the momentum. So basically, if we have less momentum, we're gonna have less of a, of a zone, right? So that's why you see thinning and broadening. Um, but other than that, it's only the, the zone where we can be expecting the reaction. Um, the darker the zone, the less reactive. Nevertheless, this, uh, this dark zone, it is high reactivity and the bright zone is like very high reactivity. So as long as we are within the bands, that means high or very high reactivity. So yeah, uh, does that uh, answer your questions, L.O. Brown? Wait, what's up? C is goat. You say dark is the low one talking about the red no dark talking about dark dark green dark red and that is high high reactivity 
bright, this bright green or bright red. That means very high reactivity. Will this be visible in smaller time frames? Yes, as long as you have volume. So there is, um, because they need volume to actually react, if you are using them with a very low volume in um, coin, they might not be plotting. What about the light green side at the, at the bottom? All right, we already have talked about this, but let's repeat it one more time. So remember guys that I talked about a trend base added to these waves, right? So this is exactly what this is a trend shifting uh, indicator. So does that answer your question? Has Sand been tripping and Cadmo? So basically as you see it uh, consolidating or basically establishing in within a bullish trend, you see the green light band. And as we start consolidating or establishing within a very strength, you'll see the uh, red line at the top. All right. So let's move into the next one. Um, here we go. So momentum waves already know what we know. What is it? Candle structure already know. Uh, prime ranges. This is getting very fun. So I usually like to have prime ranges and prime trend assistance. We're going to be seeing uh, them differently and apart from each other. Nevertheless, we're going to also add them together. So guys, for especially for the veterans, do you guys remember the predictive ranges? So for the new members, predictive ranges are some lines that early come into the trend and is predicting where is the price is going to be channeling in. That's why it's called predictive ranges. So basically, it's predicting where is the range is going to be happening in a certain period of time, right? In a certain part of the charts. So it, it is divided between the middle line, which is blue. Then we have the golden lines, which is the golden range that we have in there. And then we have the rest of the tools. Don't worry, we're going to go over them. But just so you understand and know how they compare to each other, because they have to do um, one to each other. So this one, this, uh, this tool, again, prime ranges, they are an advance of the predictive ranges. They are not the same code. They're different code. They're different math, but they're basically a dynamic a predictive range system. So what it means, they are adaptive to the actual wave or uh, shape of the of the trend. Remember, especially for the veterans, when we start having a pull and then a blue flag, and then we go back down, we usually predict that, all right, we can have a range system like this, or we can have a uptrending range like this, correct? So there is no longer need to uh, guess it manually. Now we can rely on this tool, and as you can see, it start plotting based on the shape of the range. So basically, this is like a dynamic predictive range, which will shape its way around the trend. So it is way much more powerful. Why? Because you don't need to have straight lines. And remember that straight lines on nature and the charts are a, are a life thing. Why? Because at the end of it all, charts are generated with people are buying or selling. And 90% of the traders that are in this uh, markets, they buy and sell based on emotions. So we're basically charting um, human emotions. Therefore, having a dynamic range system, it's a very, very powerful tool. So once we get on inside one of those ranges, you can look at that, see how very precisely it tracks tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, right? And as we break through again, tops and bottoms, and as we break through tops and bottoms, right? And as we break through again, tops and bottoms, and so on and so forth. So you can see how precise it marked this uh, trend range, right? And as we can see, we might be at the very top of that ranging system. So as long as we can find support somewhere around here, we might be able to break it above 
or if we do not find support, we will be visiting the lower zones at this ranging system. So any questions about the prime ranges? So time frame is relevant. Yes, it is. Just need volume to optimize. Yep. Is there a way to make the prime ranges stand out more in style settings? Yes, uh, but you will have to need to go through the the settings in here on visibility. Sorry, no style. Let me take a look at. Mm, seems like it doesn't. You know what? Yeah, I thought we did have it unlocked, but it's not. Uh, you can actually leave that comment. I think that is a very important comment. Leave it on, on feature request. And we're going to make sure to pitch it to the, um, to the developers so they can add it. I think that's also a, a good um, request to be shown. All right. Any more questions about prime ranges? Absolutely. All right. Well, then let's move back into the next one. And remember, we're going to get back to prime ranges once we take a look at the trend assistance. So trend assistance is an early call for the trend mode to be switching or to be switched. So basically, when we start having some difference uh, on the ranging or on the structure of the market, and let's take a look at this section right here. So I believe SPI, Rigid Classics, and who else is going to remember this one? I think Mohammed, Rash, 0203, I think, Passantra, Kumar, uh, who else? I mean, oh, Random Holiday, uh, Cadmo, I think you were in that class. And, of course, Said Sultan 115, Jakey, you guys are going to be uh, remembering this one. So let's, uh, let's remember the head and shoulder lines, right? They doesn't always look like a head and shoulder, but I think you remember where am I going. So we have a very nice uptrend, right? And an uptrending means higher highs, right? And higher lows. Therefore, we can draw a resistance line in, resistance line in there, correct? And once we have that resistance line, we can see, all right, higher lows, right? And higher highs. Well, then what happens next? Well, we have a lower high, and there we have a new pattern to be taken, right? And these lines usually form a head and shoulders or an inverse head and shoulders. Remember that, guys? So now, I mean, it is very important to note this, but now you don't actually need to manually draw this because your trend assistance is telling you, hey, look at here, we just had a lower high. Well, then that could be very much the beginning of a downtrending. And as you can see, look at where do we have the actual confirmation of the downtrend. We had it here, but your previous line, right, actually let you know as soon as we had the lower high. So you see how powerful this, this tool is. Let's see. Uh, any questions? So good. I want this to. What is there? What? Yeah. Uh, is it super trend? No, it is not super trend. Uh, all of our yeah, all of our codes are unique codes. Yes, they're they're built from scratch. Uh, Ban memories of super trend when I was a noob. <laughs> all right. Yeah, Su Massa. What's up? You want to pitch in, Arby? I do. I want to. I want to make uh, clarify something that people may not know. So, guys, just so you're tracking, TradingView sometime this year is going to be going through all paid indicators, and if they're not original, unique code, they're going to be gone as a paid indicator. They will not exist on TradingView anymore. They're doing. They're cleaning house. So, a lot of the paid indicators that you guys know out there, uh, very likely could not exist sometime in the next eight months. <laughs> um, all of our code has already been listed publicly with TradingView and has been verified as unique and original. There is no copying of our code that you can get in any free indicator on the market. 
So let's get started guys. So let's take a look at what we were talking about. So we're talking about right here on the on this train, the train assistance, right? And how we usually uh, draw those uh, head and shoulders lines or those trend lines that we look at, take a look at right here on the side uh, as blue lines. And then as we can take a look at here on the left side, Here on the left side, uh, we can see how fast the train assistance actually cut the retest, right? So you can see right here that we have a lower high in this section, then the lower low, and now we can draw the trend line or straight trend line that we usually had right there, right? Right before um, we actually could have done it manually, the train assistance got it first. All right. So as you may know already that my base configuration oscillates between 43 and 25. So let's take a look at what we have on 25 on the tuning. So let me click it in here and click OK. And now let's just wait for this little eye to stop swirling around and see the results on the chart. We're going to be seeing that um, little strong signal right here that it actually moved to the left and we can see that that one actually broke through that train assistance right and that train assistance actually is telling us look at that um, we're breaking in here and as we can take a look at the oscillator we also have an oversold correct at the bottom which actually indicates us that we might be going to revisit some other uh, higher zones in there and as expected uh, previously we usually had that bounce and whenever we have the flag remember that the flag is not your entry your entry it is at the retest or out the bounce of the flag correct so basically right here so let's take a look at now how it actually moved very very nicely into that uh, train assistance let's take a look at this other one remember is your entry is not in the flag is on the retest again not in the flag on the retest right here look at where is that retest actually happening it actually is very very precise of course that we need to compensate for volatility on the stop loss if you don't know what i'm talking about of, about compensating for volatility do not miss on friday class but yeah i mean this is this would have been our entry and our stop loss uh would have been a little bit high and as you can see it also works as a uh, resistance so going up for that resistance and taking that short back again okay guys so as a wrap up let's take a look at the entry so the entry is not in the flag it's in the retest right at the um, resistance look at that so retest retest and they all line up very nicely at the trend assistance uh, line so let's take a look at something else right now and let's go over all the way to the end of the chart and let's try to apply what we just learned all right, so let's remove this. And once again, uh, remember the flag is not your entry, the retest is. So right here, the flag, not your entry, but the retest is. And the retest use, just happened right at the trend assistant line, right there, very nicely. All right, so moving on to the end of the chart, uh, let's take a look at what, where we are right now and how we're standing so we are we have a buy signal right here right we have the train assistance we have broke through the train assistance rent train assistance and we're waiting for the retest correct so basically we might be waiting right here on this zone the re-entry or the entry for the breakout and retest on the train assistance all right guys so let's get rid of everything that we have scribbled on the chart right here and then let's head over to the settings and implement the usage of the trend assistance with the uh, prime ranges. So here we go, trend assistance with the prime ranges. As you may know already, I mentioned this at the beginning of the class. The trend, um, the prime trends usually, or the trend assistance usually works great with the prime range. So let's turn it off. Let's give it one sec for it to load. And then once it's loading, that little eye stops rolling. Let's see what we have right here. All right, so we have this alliance that we already know that they're very nice to keep the trend going. So you can see how when we have this as a support, once it breaks to the downside, it usually we usually have that uh, flag so again is not the flag your entry is your retest and look at that confluence point right here the train assistance 
with that uh, prime range actually happening to come to have some confluence together right there so you can see how precise they actually come out so let's take a look at this other example you can see um, this uh, prime ranges uh, going at the bottom of this other range that we have right here so you can see these little two uh, bottoms and uh, basically how it's contained that range is being contained at that uh at that area all right so let's take a look at some other examples in here uh let's uh, see how we actually broke through that uh those zones um on the retest and then after breaking the trend we usually uh see it with uh dropping to farther levels to the downside so again look at that we're having that uh bull flag so again it is not the bull flag it's on the confluence between that train assistance right again if we if you do not take that one you can actually take this other second entry again look at that on the train assistance and then uh bouncing of it of the confluence zone and going to find the other uh support all right so let's take a look at uh this other check marks that we have that are part of the train assistance so this uh check marks are part of the trend so they actually measure the trend length and the volatility of the trend and once we have a base calculation we can figure out whether we have outstanding volatility or of extension of that trend and then start measuring so when we start seeing that the trend is being stretched to its limits or basically having those weeks to the upside and absorption so when we are prolonging out of that trend we're going to have one of those purple check marks so uh, they're a great signal to start taking some profits in fact that's how they're called but it is not a taking profit exclusive indicator so let's see if we can find some other one uh, we have a purple check mark and we also have another check mark so based on this trend uh, this will be a nice opportunity to take uh, some profits at this zone. You can start seeing that we are starting losing some momentum out of the trend. And basically from this uh, upgoing zone, you can see that we lost that momentum and then we start uh, ranging out of this other zone. So that will be a great opportunity to take some profits at this area. Remember that the name of the game is Confluence and look at this area right here. We're having what we call here this lines. Can anybody tell me those are divergences, various divergences. And along with this check mark right here, we see that we're not only losing that momentum on the divergences. We also have that overextension on the trend, which indicates altogether that we're coming maybe to a, to an end or to a reduction of uh, volatility of momentum of that trend so once again those check marks are very nice to start grabbing some profits it is not a take profit exclusive tool it is actually measuring when we have overextension on or outstanding overextension out of a trend another way that we can also read this when we are losing that momentum but we are still uh somewhere above the dynamic reactor we can be expecting two things so you can see right here this section that we have that momentum then we have that little check mark and then we can roll back down or do some ranging remember that ranging it's another way of correction right remember guys that these tools are uh, made to follow the trend so they're very dynamic so that's why uh they're more power oh, that, that's why they're very powerful you can see right here how they act as resistance as support basically channeling in this uptrend that at the end of it all uh end up breaking to a downside with that strong uh downtrend so once again guys this prime trend assistance and the prime ranges they work great together as you can see you have that inside of the trend direction with the prime trend assistance and prime ranges and also the breakouts and retests so once again it is great for being able to re-enter or enter into a sell or strong sell or buy or strong buy signal with that being said let's take a look at uh some other tools in here and move on with the class and settings.
So let's head over to the gear icon in here. Let's scroll down. Let's remove Prime Ranges and Prime Train Assistance. And now let's take a look at the alarm settings in here. So it's very important for you to understand that we have added a new alarm system. So the very first step is just click any of the buttons or any of the alarms you want um, to be uh, plotted on the on the alert so at this point i'm only going to be doing reversal up or reversal down just bear in mind that not because you click them all together you're going to have one single alert once they all fire up the same time so no not because you have a buy and uh something together like a sales or buy and sell together then you're going to have one single alert no that means any of these alerts that happened into the chart you're going to have a alert ringing so when you have a buy a buy will ring a sell will ring then a strong buy well then that will ring then another strong sell that will ring independently so let's click ok click this the three little dots then add alert and make sure that any alert function call is selected so this is where things get interesting so by selecting this any alert function call you make sure that whatever you have set on your charts it's gonna be uh set as an alarm alarm so also it will only be capped at the time frame that you configure it to so for example right now that i have configured on the four hour this alerts the, uh, that i have uh selected they will plot only once they appear on the four hour time frame because that's where i configure them if you want to configure in multi time frame then we will, you will have to go into each different time frame and then to configuring to configure each individual time frame by itself uh, nevertheless i do suggest staying away from that many different time frames uh, basically grab three different time frames that you may like remember your alerts are suggested to be on your main time frame in my case it is four hour all right so once again going to the settings uh, clicking the alerts that you want to be um, selected or you want to be alert on and once you uh, already have the ones that you have or you want like for example this buy and reversal and um, this reversal that I mean it's not turned on yet but I, I guess you get the point right uh, once you have clicked all of them just click OK click the three dots add alert and function alert hole right there so uh let's just add this one as an example again three dots add alert right and make sure one more time any alert function is selected and then just give it a name and then hit create so i'm going to cancel it just for now because i will not be adding them at the time all right guys so before we wrap this one up the market oracle there's one more thing that i have not talked about which is the other signal system which is the reversal at this point you can see we have uh, the buy or sell uh, indicator which is actually the trend indicator but if you click the gear icon and head over to the signal mode in here at the top you see that i have trends correct but we're missing reversal we have not talked about reversal so reversals just uh click the reversal button in here which is different from the trend mode and it is not um tuning a uh, sensitive so basically you set it and forget it so it doesn't matter what you place on tuning it will not be affected so you can see right here the flags that said reversal right so reversal when it's uh, red it is a reversal to the downside or a possible reversal to the downside correct and when you see it green it will be a possible reversal to the upside all right so these reversal signals are not like the trend mode trend mode which is the buy and sell indicator just by its name or its labels it's meant to be um to hold or show you big movements like for example um a huge and big movement that represents a trend but in this case let's just take a look at a couple of examples of the reversals so reversals are meant to be used as a very instantaneous or short-term or immediate change of direction in the chart so it is not the reversal it is not a trend shifter so let's take a look at this one for example reversal to the downside and reversal to the upside the very first um, options that we can see 
and then we're also going to be talking about this other one so let's take a look at the three different scenarios that we can have on the reversals so scenario number one all right so scenario number one two and three all right uh moving to those scenarios let's take a look at the first reversal uh flag that we have in here let me just center it up so we can nicely draw all right, so the first one will be a sharp change of direction. So going up, having that reversal, and then change of direction, just like in here. You see that one? So going up, um, having that little flag, and then reversal. And the same, the opposite way, like this one. So going down, having that V-shaped recovery with that reversal. Second one, it's going up, having that uh, reversal flag, then breaking through a, a resistance, which now is a support, and that support is strong enough to go to the upside. The opposite way it also works going down breaking through a uh, support now this support becomes a resistance and that resistance happens to push the price farther down and then the third one it's going down having that uh, blue flag or the reversal then see it ranging right and then continuing previous trend we have 70 percent chances once we have these three uh indications like going up having the reversal then ranging that give us again that 70 percent chances of continuing previous uh trend like this look at that going down reversal ranging and then 70 percent chances of continuing the previous trend now let's take a look at an option right here on the second one because we did not see it on the chart just yet so for that i need a support and resistance system for this i'm gonna modify my market Dyna dynamics pro and look at that is going up breaking through a support or a resistance then finding that uh a support and keep going up so i'm gonna be enabling my predictive ranges and also i'm gonna be enabling my multi-time frame support and resistance at this point i'm gonna be using chart uh, local mode five lines at a time and i think that will be it at this point um I might also be adding daily if I need it. So basically we're ready to go. So you see this resistance or this resistance. So we broke it. Now we went to smack ourselves with that blue line that acted as a reversal zone. So it's not about the breakout. It's about the retest and off we go. So if you also have any questions about this zone or this three uh, aspects of the blue flags, just head over and watch the previous pre-recorded se uh, section. It start at one hour and 15 minutes. So now let's also add a couple of lines in here, the support and resistance, multi-time frame support and resistance. And you can see that we had that reversal right at that um, resistance point. So here we go, this resistance, and then we just broke it, find support, and then off we go. All right, guys, so let's take a, a look at an example on how to trade on the reversals. Remember that we are looking at confluence at this point, and we usually say that we need at least three points of confluence. So we're going up. We are hitting this uh, resistance. We see this reversal point in here, and look at the oscillator. We have a double top. We have a bearish divergence, and also we have a blue dot as a big seeker, right? So we decide to enter into a short in here. So opening a short right at the resistance, right? You take a look at your stop loss. You need to compensate for volatility, and then you set your uh, target price. So that will basically be it on how to take it. Remember that we're looking for confluence, right? So confluence, it's the name of the game in here. So let's take a look at what else we have uh, on the market Oracle Pro or under the market dynamics pro so we're let's take a look at the predictive ranges i usually use predictive ranges and uh, along with the multi-time frame support and resistance to give me a very nice entry point so let's take a look at this zone you can see right here we have a reversal and we channel in between this resistance look at that so we would have entered right here at the flip of the ribbon let's take a look at this line where exactly we had that reversal happening you can see right there that after that we also had a bearish divergence so not because you have a reversal remember that we're looking for confluence so look at that we had that confluence and at the closeout candle that is our entry look at that reversal uh confluence and then off we go to the next support zone so let's remove 
uh, everything that we have on screen. Let's take a look at the next tool. So for that, let me turn off most of the things that we have going on here, just so we don't get confused. Let's talk about the order blocks in here. So let me just remove the support and resistances and the predictive ranges and go ahead and take a look at the order blocks settings in here. So we're gonna, we have a couple of options here. We have macro, we have big, medium and small. And then we also have breaker blocks. A couple of things with breaker blocks is that those breaker blocks doesn't always happen at the end. I mean, only happen at the end of the chart because they tend to be updated as we go on. So let's take a look at this uh, zones that we have. So right now you can see a colored uh, zone or line at the, at the bottom that says medium. And then you can also see uh, a bar here. So the greater it is or the bigger it is, the higher the color. So it goes from blue to, uh, to red. Uh, if it's uh, a resistance or support. So right now we can see we have the medium uh, breaker blocks and if I turn them off, they're gonna become a order block. So an order block you can see as we go through them, right? Uh, the liquidity is supposed to be grabbed. Like in this one, we grabbed a couple of liquidity, but we still have some liquidity. We don't, we did not completely got rid of that. So let's take a look at, for example, macro one. You can see right here, how is it going from green, from blue to green and this uh, medium ones uh, or this other big one. Let's take a look at that one. Uh, this other big ones, you can take a look at how the color are changing depending on the volume that we have trapped within those uh, order blocks. So breaker blocks. Now that we have breaker blocks, let's take a look at this uh, section in here just to have a little overview. That enabling breaker blocks will convert the order blocks into static support resistance. So the, the previous support resistance zones now they're being substituted or the evolution are the breaker blocks. So basically an order block that gets uh, absorbed or actually violated or get broken, you see right here, it becomes a breaker block, correct? And a breaker block means that it's a static support and resistance because we have value exchange at that zone. So again, a uh, order blocks become a breaker block or a support resistance zone once we have grabbed uh, the volume from it. As you can see right here, we uh, touch it. We are going for that retest right now and it had become a breaker block instead of order block. So the difference between those is that the order block is where uh, retails or people are just placing their orders and a support and resistance zone or a breaker block, it is a zone in which we have exchanged that value. So basically the price has come there and actually we grab the value from the order block and then had a reaction in there. So a price or a value exchange, right? And that's what makes uh, a breaker block uh, out of an order block. All right, so let's remove all the, the things that we have on screen and head back again to the menu. So the gear icon and let's take a look at the breaker blocks in here that we have been activated. Once again, breaker blocks are order blocks that had uh, price exchange or value exchange. So let's take a look at how we define the settings from big. So basically we're having this whole section being analyzed depending on how far back we take a look at it. For, sorry, so for example, let's take a look at or talk about the look back period. Let's head back into the settings and take a look instead of big. Let's do something uh, larger. So uh, at this point, let's do small so you can see how uh, it reacts to it. So let's just wait for it to react. Here we go. So right now we're taking a look at smaller section of the price action and let's head back again to macro so we can see the look back period is actually larger. So we're going farther back into the time and taking all this uh, price action and all this price action and giving it a value. So depending on what you're looking for, you might be able to change between big and medium, which are my personal recommendations when you're trading the four hour time frame or any time frame, by the way. Um, also remember that you can activate breaker blocks or deactivate them. So let's take a look at right now the BOLCOC, OCHOC, which is uh, break of structure and change of character. So uh, we won't have enough time to go over the specifics of uh, BOS and COCH, um, which is this break of structure right here. Like for example, uh, the structure is a ranging zone. And as we get uh, breaking through that ranging zone to the lower zone, 
uh, we have a break of structure, usually break of structure at a continuation pattern right here. The change of character is because we have definitely broken that, that change, um, that break of structure, and then we're making a uh, lower low. So basically we're turning around on the trend, on the local trend, like from here. So just so you remember guys, uh, if you need a little bit more information on break of structure or uh, change of character, just Google it. There are a smart money concept. So moving on into a couple of questions that we have had right here in the chat. It's about the order blocks and breaker blocks. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. So mo most of the questions are about the colors and the order blocks um, size, right? So the colors right here, you can see how they gain strength. So, so usually the bigger the number, the higher the color or the stronger the color and the bigger the the, the hardest string is so right here you can see how they're empty while we are breaking through those zones those are breaker blocks remember we have activated the breaker block uh, setting here which means that we're going to turn into a support or a static support and resistance zone as we grab the volume through that breaker block so basically they're turned empty and if we turn them off we will see that we gain back that color um scheme indicating uh, how strong those uh, order blocks are and how much volume we have in them. So let's take a look at right now at some of the tools that we have on the Market Dynamics Pro. In this case, let's take a look at the FAR value gap. So let's just do a quick reminder of the fire, uh, fair value gap. This fair value gap, it's where price moves so fast that traders are usually not able to jump in. And then we see a retracement. So when we see that retracement, we're going for that fair value zone, right? So basically we use them as zones of retest or re-entry. So let's take a look at here. You see those big candles, like for example, the green one, those big candles moving up and then as a perfect fair value gap in here uh, for a retest. So uh, very self-explanatory very simple so let's move into the next uh tool that we have so remember guys if you have any questions just leave it in the side chat so moving on to the wedges detection system that we have here let's take a look at the we have narrowing wedges we have broadening wedges we have double top patterns double batter double bottom patterns and head and shoulders pattern and also inverse head and shoulders so moving on into one example of here, let's take a look at the narrowing wedges. Something important to note is that the broadening wedges in here, this one usually override narrowing wedges. So make sure that you activate one or the other one because the broadening wedges will be overriding or over uh, reading the narrowing wedges. So if you need to add them both or you want to add them both, just go ahead and add another instance of the market dynamics and then on the market on the other instance of, of market dynamics just add either uh, either of those so let's go ahead and take a look at some other time frames here so let's go over to three minutes and take a look at what happened so we have a narrowing wedge and when i turn on the broadening wedge you can see the narrowing wedge goes away so if i turn it back off the narrowing wedges come back in just so you know that whenever you're activating them activating two of those uh, you need to either layer them out, so narrowing wedges in one, and then uh, broadening wedges in the other instance that you may have. Uh, so let's take an example of what we can see right here. So going to the small section in here, and then we see right here a pattern with a red X right here, uh, which actually broke out very, very nicely, went to that um, zone with the breaker block on the low zone and then just uh, bounce from it. So very nice. So let's move into some other example and start using them uh, properly so we can go over the steps on how to do so. Now that we are in the 30 minutes uh, chart, let's take a look at how I do it. So first of all, I do recommend to go the highest one that we can. In this case, it's gonna be the macro uh, presetting and then look for something in the charts. So at this point, I don't see anything. So that's okay. Remember that you don't need to have a pattern appearing it depends of the chart then let's take a look at just let's just wait for the wedges to um, finish up detecting and then move yourself or move the wedge detection presets uh, going lower until you start seeing something so in this case we see medium then small again waiting for that little eye to stop swirling around and we see we have a pattern in there so the point in here is to take a look at the rest of the patterns also 
and take a look at what we have in here. Also, the swing, swing fail pattern is the one showing you where our swing patterns actually fail and did not complete it, like um, in the rest of the chart. So right here, we can see, if I move the chart over, the head and shoulder pattern, we can see another head and shoulder, and so on and so forth. So right now, let's take a look at uh, an example of how to trade this pattern. So let's turn everything off and then just uh, stick with one. In this case, we're gonna be the narrowing wedges. So once we see that taking effect on the chart, let's just select the narrowing wedges and wait for it to take effect into the chart. So right away, we can see an effect taking um, effect on the chart. So the next step is just see if we can trade it and with this settings, with small settings at the end of the chart, you can see that we have that red X and actually we had the target in here. If we move the target where the breakout actually happened, we can see right there that we actually met the target perfectly. So also just remember that we could have fake outs and some other stuff uh, that might uh, contribute to the pattern uh, breaking through either side. Remember that nothing settles off on stone and depending on, on the oscillator support resistances, we can take a look at where is that pattern gonna be breaking. So whatever I do recommend is to start again with the uh, biggest one and then move yourself into the smaller one until you start catching some of those entries or tradable triangles or formation that you may be looking for. As we have talked about uh, fail uh, patterns in using this, other uh, tool that is called swing fail pattern. You can see with the red uh, arrow right here, uh, that is, is showing you where that fail pattern actually happened. And then as you can see, we moved into a different trend after that signal happened, yep. So basically when you see these lines, it's just telling you that a pattern has been failed and you might be looking into an opposite direction uh, move on the charts. So moving into the multi-time support and resistance right here, uh, let's take a look at how to use it. It's basically the same as the previous version. We have it disabled. Uh, we also have it in chart and everything is basically set up the same way. The important part in here is that now you can set any chart on top uh, on any other chart and it will not affect the RAM. So let's go ahead and take a look at this disable and take a look at the options that we have. As you can see, we have macro, local, midterm, uh, mid and extended mode, right? So let's start with local mode and take a look at what happens in here. So we're gonna be talking about right now on chart. So that means whatever I have on here on the charts. And then I can, uh, for example, choose another time frame in this one. So maybe if I'm using the four hour, I can use the 12, the 12 hours and the daily. And then I'm gonna keep it keep them turned off just for now. But you can see right now that we're going all the way up uh, till this section in here. So based on the local section that we're seeing, we started here and we're talking about the, uh, the look back period. So basically we're looking at this section on the chart, right? So let's take a look at some other um, look back periods in here and see how they compare so we can explain a little bit more. So let's go over midterm in here, click OK. And that midterm will be looking farther back into your charts and give you a high range. Based on that range that starts, uh, let me show you, from here onwards, uh, you can see how we define the bottom line, which in this case is the number one, the strongest one, and then at the top, the number three line, which is in this case, the resistance. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So let me just remove this and show you those lines that we can set them up based on our um, uh, on our numeric value that we change in here. So as you can see right here, I have a number five and I'm showing you here five. So if I change it to seven, I will take a look at the seven most important support resistances. And if I go to three again, I will only be displaying the three most important support resistances. So this is useful when you have a ton of clutter on where you're trying to either find your initial or most recent support and resistance or the most strong support and resistance on the charts. So now let's take a look at the extended mode here, which is uh, one of the biggest ones. So remember guys, if we went from local to midterm now to extended, 
you will see that the lookbook period right now it's farther uh, down into the into a time frame. So just a quick uh, tipping here that if you go, for example, to weekly and you are in Coinbase or something with not enough information, you might not be able to see the support resistance because it just doesn't have enough uh, to calculate whereas that support resistance will be. So my advice is go somewhere like Bitstamp where you might have much more information. And if you still can't see anything in the charts, just reduce instead of extend it to local or something like that. Or there's another way in which you can go into a lower time frame, like for example, a daily. And then on daily, you might be able to increase the look back period in order to have much stronger support resistances that might be acting as weekly. So that uh, goes for when you want to see, for example, weekly support resistance, but you're not willing to change uh, from your broker into another broker. So you can go into a lower time frame and then uh, increase the look back period into going to, for example, midterm and then increase the amount of support resistance. That way you can see we go all the way up there and all the way down here um, to cover the whole data or the whole price action. And as we go back to weekly, you see again, because we don't have enough information, uh, the support resistance might be disappearing. So again, going back, for example, in this four hour uh, time frame, and then looking to add a higher or lower uh, look back period, we'd increase or decrease the strength of the support resistance. So now, uh, the important part comes in here where we can add multiple uh, time frames in the same one. So for example, I'm in the four hour right now, I added local mode in one day and then local mode in 12 hours and then I'm reducing the amount of lines. So again, I am right now on the four hour time frame, right? And in this four hour time frame, you can see it here that I have 240 minutes, which is a four hour, right? And one day, which is again, daily. And also let me look for it the 720 minute, which is the 12 hour, right? All of those lines are support and resistance with the of different uh, time frames, all plotted inside the four hour time frame. As for example, you can see here, we start looking for confluence. These two zones, they are matching together, for example, these two lines. So we're having a nice zone in here, another nice zone in here, where most of the indicators get together, therefore giving off giving us that confluence. So that's why it's very, very important and powerful, the multi time frame support resistance, because it let us use multiple time frames uh, or higher time frames in lower charts. So we can have all of the information plotting into the same uh, time frame that we are working on, and that will uh, basically save us the work to use multiple screens or going back and forth um, from the charts and basically making the analysis way, way much, much easier and faster. All right, guys, so moving on to the next tool, let me just turn off all of this support multi time frame support resistance. And we're gonna be taking a look at enable predictive ranges and important part, and also something that we just added into the predictive ranges uh, after making them much, much uh, precise is that uh, we have added the multi time frame functionality. So the setting in here is 50, just as default as always. So right now chart means whatever I have right here on my chart, right? But also remember that I said that we have added a multi time frame functionality. So for example, in this case, I if I wanted to add, for example, multiple instances of this one, I could be repeating it and then placing, for example, the one day uh, below the other market or uh, market dynamics pro. And that's so when I could be comparing whatever I have my confluence zones between the predictive ranges. Another way to be using them is basically um, if you cannot add another instance, you basically uh, take a look at where uh, the lines are in your chart. So for that, let me just clear up the charting here. And also let's um, turn off the order blocks or breaker blocks that we have in here. So double click on top of them will actually bring up this menu. So let me move on top of here and click on disable on the order blocks. That's the way you turn them off. And now let's start seeing 
or let's do a quick reminder what these lines uh, mean and how they are uh, used to be traded. So as you can see, we have one section in here and then we basically break out. So we break out usually from this purple lines when the price action breaks through those ones. And then we recalculate uh, the next uh, zone or the next range to our right. So basically uh, after breaking uh, those lines, those purple lines, we take a look at, at the next blue line this is the delta line the blue line the zero line uh, the mirror line or however you want to call it the important part in this case is that you understand that this is the folding line right so the folding line is basically telling you that whenever you fold this chart you're going to have a mirror image above and below this line so you can see right here we have the golden lines then the different color ones which are red and green and finally the purple ones so let's take a look at first at this golden range that we have in here so usually this is where most of the price action is going to be crossing or bouncing from from the golden lines as long as we're contained with this whole scenario again if we break through the uh purple lines we will be recalculating the predictive ranges so again after breaking through that predictive range the most crossed line will be the folding line and then where we bounce the most cases is going to be the um, golden line so the point in here is to figure out where is the price going to be channeling in right so we know we're going to be crossing through that uh through that blue line and the best case scenario, we're gonna be bouncing from the golden lines, right? So kind of like at the golden range, but also that is not the only option. We could be bouncing maybe from a golden line and maybe the blue line, or like before between the golden lines in here, or maybe uh, we can take a look at the other option, which could be between the red line and golden line, or again, to the opposite way between the green one and the golden line. So the important part in here is to acknowledge that um, the most important line will be the golden one and we need to see where is it going to be channeling in. So at this point, we can see we broke the purple line right in here and right after breaking it almost immediately, we regenerate a new section here and went to find the blue line as expected, right? After that, we can see how the price action start channeling in here and then we see another step down channel and as you can see we ended up channeling between uh the golden line and the blue line and now we're kind of like uh compressing between the golden line and again uh the other blue line but in a different way so another important characteristic of this uh ranges this predictive ranges is the possibility to understand how the price will be reacting so for example if you're in traditional markets take a look at these two lines the green and the red one so that's where we start advising where you that you start looking at some confluence so especially on the traditional markets because we usually expect less volatility than in the other uh like crypto space right so when we start hitting those lines so the green or the red uh, we should be looking at opportunities to enter. So it doesn't mean that we're going to enter here and exit here or enter on the red one or exit in the green one. It means that when we're getting closer or at that line, we should be looking at something else like the oscillator down here. And let's take a look at what's happening here. So as we get closer to that line, you can see we have a double top. We have a bearish divergence crossing through that zero line. Also, we have two dots in there. And as you can see, we had a very nice reaction to it. Let's take a look at this other example in here. You can see as we get close to that green line, we're looking for confluence. So let's mark that one and look at at the bottom. We already have a double bottom. We have a, um, a golden box. We have a reversal signal. And as you can see, we did have that bounce of the blue line right there. Now it's the turn to take a look at the trend lines. So let's head over to market dynamics, click the gear icon, move this to the side so we can see the changes in here and then scroll down and let me just turn off the predictive ranges at this now point. Now that we are in the trend lines, let's just take a look at how they work. So if we take a macro, we're gonna have long lasting and much stronger trend lines. If we go big, it will be a little bit easier to break, medium, a little bit more easy to break. And finally, small, the immediate uh, trend line that we have 
So again, let's take a look at macro. So as I uh, told you before, they're gonna be uh, much stronger, but also might not be as tradable as the small ones in here. So I do recommend take a look at what you're trying to trade and then adjust as, um, as desired. Another tool that we can see right here, here are the premium and discount zones. So this is another smart money concept uh, tool that we can use. So it usually reads the current range in which we are and it predicts where is the lower points, the fair price of the asset and then that premium zone. So the premium zones are usually where you try to sell. The discount zones is usually where you try to buy. And the equilibrium zone is where you see uh, the price ranging. So the first thing is to understand here is that we it, this indicator will be updating frequently because with every candle we have a new calculation, therefore it's gonna be moving fast. But the point here is to see and figure out where the, the range is happening. So you can see it's happening between the zones and the red ones. So entering at the uh, green zones and trying to take some profits at the red zones, right? The equilibrium point right here. Let's take a look at what happened previously. As you can see, and I previously um, show you when the price gets to here, it tends to range. Right, so this could be a good zone to start taking some profits if you had the chance to enter on the discount zones. Remember, none of these indicators had to or are made to be used as standalone indicators, correct? So we are right now at the equilibrium zone finding rejection on the whole ranging system. So what we could be expecting is maybe a little range like we had and that zone so basically uh, on, based on previous data we can figure out on this indicator how the price might be uh, reacting into each zone again uh, we're trying to buy low and sell high uh, right now let's take a look at the swing levels so previously on the multi time frame super resistance we usually have zones so a uh, top zone and then a bottom zone but right now we can uh, have the same indicator but in a much better way so let me explain a bit farther as i explained previously on the multi-time to point resistance previously we used to had some two zones so at the bottom of the range and at the top of the range based on the look back period but right now we can take a look at where a swing trader could be entering for a long and maybe exiting for profit and also, depending on how many lines, we can actually be using it to take profits. Like, for example, at this point, let me enable predictive ranges or premium discount zones because they usually work very, very nice with uh, discount zones. And as you can see, they're lining up perfectly, right? Again, buy low, sell high. This usually works exceptionally well when you're trying to swing trade any time frame. Like in this case that I'm on the four hour, this will be a great opportunity to enter. This could be some take profits, maybe going for that retest and finally taking some more profits or close, even closing the, the long and opening a short at the top right there. Again, take a look at how the confluence is working out in here. We have uh, the two lines in there. Uh, we also can see right down here we have overbought reversal bearish divergence so this all indicates that it might be reversing to the downside all right so let's take a look at the next one in this case that's, turn, that's going to turn off premium discount zones in this case we, there's only left on how to create the alerts which we already have taken a look at let's do a, re, a quick recap only make sure you check mark um, the ones you want and just place the uh, any function alert there so guys, thank you very much for being a part of this class. I really hope this helps. Uh, do not miss on Friday class. Uh, at this point, we still have a live class to go. And remember, nothing from here could be done or achieved without your support, guys. So thank you very much for participating in today's class and see you guys on Friday.